everyone and welcome to the wall, the Facebook wall for Fournier and Fournier and today what we're going to talk about is short sales. So let's start by defining exactly what a short sale is. A short sale is the sale of a home in which the sales price falls short of the current loan on that property. Now let's say for example you bought a house for $500,000 three to four years ago. Well chances are that house is probably worth more on the scale of three fifty to four hundred thousand um, dollars. Now, obviously, if you're going to sell it, you have to sell it in today's market for less than what you bought it for. That is exactly what a short sale covers. Now, when I say cover, one of the things you have to realize is that one of the things that requires that is required by the bank for a short sale is for the seller or the owner of the property to actually be in default and that means that they haven't made their payments. Now a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of people think that you can just go to the bank because your house is worth less than you paid for it and appeal to the bank. And although we've seen some banks give a little crack in their policy with regard to that, up until recently that was the absolute golden rule was that you had to actually go in default first, again, meaning that you didn't make your payments. Before I get into how that applies in the process of a short sale, let me go back and talk about people's misconception of probably what a short sale is. Now, the word short sale probably means opportunity to most people. It might have the implication that maybe it's going to happen in a short amount of time and maybe I'm going to be able to pay a short amount as opposed to fair market value. So there's an appeal by the name of the situation in and of itself that may be appealing to some people right away and they want to look into it. But let me reassure you something about short sales. First of all, I coined the phrase about three to four years ago that there's nothing short about a short sale. And for those of you that have been involved in them before, you certainly know what I'm talking about. Now, what happens in a short sale is very simply something that's kind of a negative, and that is that the seller of the property, or the owner of the property, and the bank are getting shorted. Okay, that's where the term comes from. They are getting shorted the money that they normally expected to have when this process goes through. So that's what makes this a different sale from your regular conventional sales. There is a little bit of sourness on the other end and as a result there's a lot of emotional attachment to that certainly by the seller and somewhat by the bank even. So when you approach a short sale situation the number one thing that you have to have and if you don't have this please don't even attempt it is a lot of patience. Short sales can take anywhere from a few weeks to honestly months. In some cases we've heard short sales not, not actually closing for seven to eight months. So what I'm going to explain to you today is what's typical of short sales, but realize the area that you live in also creates a different playing field for a short sale situation. Now why would a buyer be interested in buying a short sale? Well, a buyer would be interested in buying a short sale simply because it's their perception that the seller is probably offering it at market value or under market value. Walking away from your house, although it is a consideration and a choice, and obviously a very difficult one, has its consequences. And one of the consequences from walking away from your house is when you actually walk away from the loan as well. When you walk away from home, there are extreme considerations to uh, take into account. One of those being that walking away from a loan does set you up for liability as far as the IRS is concerned. Now, I'm not a tax expert, and so I'm not giving tax advice now, but I can tell you what I've been told about the possibility of having the IRS actually come for a tax on the entire amount of your loan. And what that means basically is that for that year, if you walk away, let's say from a $500,000 house where your loan amount was $500,000, the IRS can come back after you and consider that your income for the year. So they'd actually tack on the $500,000 that you walked away from, plus your regular income for the year. Now, in the last couple of years, there's been some new laws that have protected most people against that. 
but not everybody's protected against that, so it's definitely something you want to take into consideration when you're going to do, uh, when you're just going to walk away from your house. And now, with a short sale, you avoid that because what ends up happening is that since the bank has now, for all intents and purposes, let you off the hook because they have another borrower, you therefore do not owe that money uh, according to the IRS as you would before if you went through a foreclosure proceedings. Again, I'm not trying to give tax advice. This is something that differs with everybody, but it's the primary reason that people end up using a short sale scenario. In a short sale situation, the seller themselves, that is the owners, really don't care what the price of the house is listed for. The only consideration, and I say only, but it really is the most important consideration, is how the bank feels about the price that's agreed upon by the buyer and the seller. Remember, since the bank is going to be shorted their money, they have the right to say yes or no to any offer. So getting an offer signed by the owner is really an easy step. Now the stage at which you have to apply most of your patience is when your offer is actually presented to the banks. Banks all have a different set of priorities when it comes to handling short sales. Now, for the most part, banks will handle the short sale pretty quickly if they've already been involved in a property for a number of months that may or may not have had um, an escrow fallout or a deal fall through. In that situation, you can actually get an answer from a bank probably within a week or so um, because they've already they're already very familiar with that property. But that's not always the case. In fact, more often than not, this is usually the first offer they've had on the property. And since they really haven't seen anyone come through with a bona fide offer, they're not really paying attention to that property until they still have the paperwork in front of them. That's when they get serious. Now, when a bank gets serious, that doesn't mean it happens right away. It means they begin to start to get to work. Now, one of the things I want to stress, and I'm going to say something very controversial right now, and that is this. Very few bank employees are as experienced and are as knowledgeable as realtors are when it comes to actually identifying the true market value of a property. Let's face it, realtors are out there every single day. They actually visit the properties every single day. They actually visit the neighborhoods every single day. So they have a precise knowledge about the value of the property. The problem comes when you have a bank employee stating that they know for sure what a property is worth and for the most part they're not realtors, they're not marketers, they don't understand what it takes to sell a house. And that's the essential problem with this process and that's the part that usually ends up taking the most amount of time. It's that interaction between the realtors and the bank deciding what the true value of the property is. Now one of the things that banks are very aware of and that is this. Banks are very aware that the general public thinks that a short sale is going to be under market value. And that's absolutely not the case. So banks are always protective of their position, given that they realize that most buyers think they can take advantage of them. And so that's the process that most people have a rude awakening about when it comes to making an offer. So when you make an offer on a short sale, understand that appealing to a bank is just like appealing to a personal owner, although there's not as much attachment emotionally uh, to attach to the house. So, if you're expecting to get 30-50% under market in a short sale, please don't waste your time. But if you're more realistic with your offer, and you're offering anywhere from 5 to 15%, at least at that point you can get a dialogue going. And that's what this is really all about. And that's really what most real estate uh, sales are all about. You have to be a realistic and get a realistic dialogue going in order to be successful in getting a transaction accepted. Well, once again, thank you for taking the time to look at this video. I hope I educated you somewhat about uh, the advantages and disadvantages of short sales. If you have any other further questions, please feel free to go on our wall at Facebook and uh, Fournier and Fournier and we'll be happy to answer. Again, contact us at 310-968-1730 or with Randy at 415-6023, both 31 area codes. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone.